Yeah. You know, I usually bring my gavel too, but I didn't bring it tonight. So. No gavel. <laughs> you can get it's all right. Just use your voice. That's your rude. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be here next week. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting for Tuesday evening, September 17th, 2019. Welcome to the viewers at home on channel 22. And for those who want to watch any replays, you can get them tomorrow morning on the town website under Budget Committee under channel 22. I'm Chairman Brian Warburton for the 2019-2020 year. I'd like to introduce my members starting to my left. Ginny Bridal Russell, School Board Representative. <clears throat> Joyce Scopertis, <clears throat> Town Representative. Steve Henderson. Mike Bluff. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative, and proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen LeBrange. And Barbara Kravitz, our Administrative Assistant. I'd like to have Mike Pluff lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first item of business tonight is the review and approval of minutes from June 18th. Any corrections on page one? The only correction I have on page one, Barbara, is it says Hampton Municipal Budget Committee public hearing draft minutes. We should remove public hearing. Any corrections on page two? Any cor uh, corrections on page three? And page four. Motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Moved by Mr. Pluff. Second. Seconded by Mr. Henderson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven zero. I would. I do want to announce tonight two excused members: David Mara and Selectman's Rep. Rusty Bridal. So let's move on to. We have with us tonight, as customary, every September, it really gets us off for a, a great season, uh, Superintendent of Schools, SAU 90, Kathleen Murphy. And with her tonight, it, and, and, and I'm happy to say I'm happy for Nate Lunny, but I'm not happy for this town and the school district, our outgoing business administrator, uh, Nate Lunny. And for the people watching at home, uh, Nathan Lunny will be and has already started his new position as business administrator in the city of Portsmouth. Um, I have to say on behalf of the budget committee and on behalf of many people who know you around the state, uh, your reputation speaks for itself. You have done an outstanding job in this community and I have to tell you too that for the regular folks who don't do finance and numbers like myself every day, I always found by watching or speaking with you or reading your reports to be the most easiest reports to read and very well thought out and very well explained. And, and I, I'd like the Budget Committee to give a nice ovation to you because I think you've, you've done an excellent job here. And we're gonna be, we're gonna miss you. And, and Superintendent Murphy, you've done a very good job too. And I know you're gonna talk tonight, I'm gonna turn it over to you about the completion of the fiscal year ending June 30th the building, which looks absolutely fantastic, and what's going on there, and any kind of other great news you want to give us. So I turn it over to you at this time. Well, well, first of all, thank you very much for having us. We do. We actually look forward to this. I know people would sort of uh, look at us kind of funny, but it gives us an opportunity to share with you the results of the work done by a lot of people you know this work isn't this work isn't done by Nate and I you know um, we have are surrounded every day with some some incredibly talented people and it starts at the top of course with our school board who are committed to the to the district and to the things that we provide for youngsters but in addition to that we have the best teachers 
teachers who are dedicated and committed to making sure that the needs of all of our kids are met. You can't ask for better ingredients than that in order to be successful. And because of that, and, and, and people's patience, we've, we've all needed patience over the last four years as we did our building, but also patience in terms of budgets and patience with, um, you know, we're in negotiations, and we'll mention that in a few minutes, but we're in negotiations with our teachers. It's patience. It's about working together and collaborating. And so we find that working with you is that that's the same feeling that we walk away with, because that's the way it, it should be. Um, this summer, um, I, we had an opportunity to, uh, to meet with your chair, um, and Brian um, <laughs> uh, treated us to some, some good donuts, and uh, not that we all needed it, but Brian, we, um, we, we appreciated that. But it was about the dialogue that happened. It was about the, tr the, the exchange of information that's so important in this work. You know, we're not perfect. We know that. And, and so to hear from others and to help us and to guide us, I think, is critical. So um, again, we, we, have, um, we, we are pleased to be here tonight. We are going to miss this guy next to me. Um, you know, I already missed him. I went upstairs today, and his office was empty, right? But um, um, Nathan is committed to this district uh, to, even tonight, and, and will continue to do some special projects for us as we uh, uh, begin this year. So. Um, I am grateful for the nine years that we've spent together in terms of making this all work, and as, especially when you think about it. You know, we were, we felt like we were entrepreneurs, you know, uh, 10 years ago when we were hired in 2010. And um, we, were, we were, we were, we were beginning a new business, and, and uh, the business of educating kids, and so what a wonderful, wonderful experience for both of us. So thank you all for, for the support that you've given us. Um, we we want to be brief. We don't want to, you know, really bog you down. Um, uh, so we'll we'll begin with uh, 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 finances. Uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about the project. I'll mention probably a couple times tonight in front of you. You have invitations to the open house um, on October fifth at Hampton Academy at ten a.m. in the morning. It's a Saturday morning, so we hope that works. I know a lot of kids have soccer games and so forth, but we we go till one o'clock, so you can come on over anytime during that. We'll have uh, we'll have a little program to start off with, but we'll also have tours and so people can really experience the building, um, and I, I feel pretty confident that you're going to enjoy that experience. So we'll talk about that and uh, end of the year stuff, and uh, I just want to share with you uh, the goals that the school board has adopted for this year. There are some changes because we completed a, uh, uh, we completed a new strategic five-year strategic, three to five-year strategic plan for the school district. So. Um, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that. So I'm going to turn it right over to Nathan, and he's going to give you an overview and a financial summary. I'm trying to do that without losing. One of these cables on that computer or connected to this whole system is loose. So if I bang them too much, I, I lost signal once. Folks, I, I, squeeze, uh, I squeeze everything I can, everything I can muster into the first slide. And so I'll talk at you for a moment or two. And, and uh, welcome your questions, obviously. Yeah, it was the, I should say that it was the, it was the tightest year we've had operationally on the budget. Um, and, uh, and we finished the operating year. The general operating budget was just, general fund budget was just over 21.7 million. And, uh, and we finished with an operating surplus of 57,000, almost 58, 50, 57,981. Uh, if you if you looked back and, and were with us for board meeting after board meeting, uh, there were significant um, overages in the area of special education. We had uh, uh, we had out of district tuitions that were paid against uh, placements that had not been included in the operating budget when we projected. Now back in the fall of 18 for the excuse me the fall of 17 for the 18 19 year, uh, but we also had. Uh, uh, series of hires that year that generated some salary surpluses and every salary surplus has connected to it some ta payroll taxes and some New Hampshire retirement contributions and those really were the balancing uh, balancing of that budget so uh, in your handout which is the right one for the right year this year <laughs> last <laughs> last year I had one of the most humbling nights of my life as the technology wasn't working so I couldn't show you anything on the overhead and the packet I had copied out was for the prior year so um, 
this year uh, I had the luxury of doing this in, a, in an office that was practically empty. So there was no mixing of documents as I get ready to hit the photocopier. Uh, the, the budget summary is the, is the third page actually in your packet. If you have an interest, you can look through the function summary that way. It's that page and you can see some of those variances uh, that I speak of, the special education area offset by largely some payroll. On the revenue side, we have some better news uh, because I say better news. I mean, I guess an operating surplus at all is good. We finished the year without, uh, without <laughs> going into the deficit. On the revenue side, revenues purely generated, I would tell you, $62,063. And, um, and, and that was really on the back of, uh, of some additional catastrophic aid that comes to offset special ed. Um, for folks that I haven't had the conversation with, I keep calling it catastrophic aid, although the state has started calling it special ed aid. Uh, we call it cat aid for so many years that it's hard to shift. But that special ed aid is a reimbursement for prior period. So as we talk today about the fact that in 1819 we had some overages in the area of tuitions, you will see that in the coming year or in the tax rate <coughs> setting for 1920 this fall, our projection of catastrophic aid revenues is significantly higher because the majority of those, I, those student cases that drove those overages in the budget were also reimbursable from the state. Those revenues don't come in 1819, they come in 1920 to offset. Uh, it's because of the paperwork and the processing and the re approval process of the state. So we see it coming a year later. So you actually have to spend the dollars against your appropriation in one year and then file for the state aid against that in the subsequent period. And the students are still part of our um, student body though, correct? They, it, they are, they're part of our enrollment. They're part of our, um, um, our, our, our enrollment calculations, our ADM, our average so daily we'll membership. So we'll see them in the next, in the next and, coming year. And what, we, what you saw in the budget that was approved in, the, in March, what you saw was some significant increases again in tuitions to keep, up with, uh, to keep up with those. Because although we didn't know about them as we planned for 1819, majority of them we knew about in 1819 as we were planning the budget for 1920. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Certainly. So, <coughs> so so those revenues, um, those revenues generated surpluses of about 62,000. And uh, in a moment, I'll come back and tell you about an, an, another 217,000 in revenues that ended up in the fund balance that are coming back from the proceeds on the bond. But let me not steal all of that thunder. I'll keep going and say that as a result, the fund balance that will offset the tax bill this fall, $337,887. Last year it was 292,524. So uh, we kept pace, um, uh, and thankfully we kept pace with the benefit of that uh, bond proceeds that we'll talk about. Quick numbers that are meaningful: uh, we pulled down 522,000 uh, dollars worth of federal grants to benefit students and learning in Hampton schools. Uh, that came from the consolidated grants, Title I, Title II, and Title III, and also from the special ed targeted IDEA. Uh, funds that come from Uncle Sam on an annual basis. In the food service program, last year we saw the lunch price rise to $2.90, trying to keep up with this, the federal government and their expectations. Uh, it generated revenues uh, as a program of 420,000 against expenses of 433, and we, we finished in a loss of 13 grand. The second year in a row, uh, we made some dollars and saw some positives <coughs> Uh, in the years that Head Start was with us and purchasing for the, from the school lunch program for its daily meals. They're now satelliting out of their Seabrook kitchen and, and so we're not providing that service to them and that has not allowed us to generate that kind of the kind of cushion that Mary did. But the program continues to carry a fund balance now of almost $5,000. And we have one trust fund, one expendable trust fund, capital reserve fund as a school district and that's held by the trustee of trust funds annually. Uh, that that uh, special ed trust fund is carrying a fund balance uh, of uh, 232,000 at the end of June uh, 2019. The slide says 18, I apologize. At the end of 2000, June, th June 30, 2019, that carried a balance of 232,000. Uh, that's, uh, I said I squeeze it all into one, um, into one slide, but those are, the those are the money things. I mean, I think, 
it, it, one of the interesting things that I've, we've talked about in the past is you find out a lot about the, the challenges we're facing in the year we're in because of the news that we bring you in the budget. So you asked the question, uh, Joyce, about the special ed tuitions. When we came to you last December, January, talking about the proposed 1920 budget, we had, we, we had knowledge then of the challenges that we had in front of us in that year. And of course, you can contemplate those students who age out, they grow from eighth grade to ninth grade and they move to Winnicott kind of High School and, and hit that budget as a reality. So we know about those, and we do our best to know about as many as we can of the, of, the, of the little guys coming through. Now, special education demands that we provide services from their third birthday forward uh, to graduation from high school or year tw age of 21. In, in Hampton, we're responsible until eighth grade because then when it kind of picks them up, but we're trying to predict, predict those to, as best we can, and so you find out about that as the as the budget unfolds this fall, you'll find out about that which we've learned as school starts and we get through the first three or four months of this school year as well. So that's the financial summary from 1819. Please do, yes. I just wanted to make a comment about the special ed. One of the things that we did this year was to add a program. And that allowed us to provide um, services that are very different than perhaps the average classroom, but to youngsters who may have been out of district place. So by creating our own program in-house, we were able to see we were able to save st substantial monies because when you out of district place these kids, the tuitions can run anywhere from like 75,000 to well over 200,000 plus transportation. So by keeping our kids with us in their communities, they're all Hampton residents, um, we were able to save a significant amount of money that otherwise would have been spent on out of district tuition. Um, we're going to continue to look at that in terms of ways. How do we control these costs? That's what we, we say. How do you control those costs and yet still provide the best services possible for the youngsters? And their needs are, you know, some of the needs are really huge and, and, and require uh, a lot of programming and a lot of service. But still, when you take a look at it and you compare costs, it's still less than if you sent them out of district. So... You've seen, you, you may have had the opportunity to be inside and see some of the Hampton Academy as the project nears its completion. Uh, we successfully opened with occupancy for the start of school. Students were with us on the 27th, 27th of August. Uh, there is some work still being done on the stage. So the, in the auditorium, although the auditorium seating and space in general is, uh, in, is there and is intact. We used it, had an opening assembly there with teachers, uh, and I, I imagine that they have had the students in there at least once to start the school year. On the stage, curtains, rigging, lights, sound, oh, the, they were continuing to do that work. It was about some late decisions that were made and then lead times on material that had to get in. And so they're completing that, and we expect uh, as we crest into October, they will have made some great strides. Um, we targeted that as a place that we could, that we could have delays because the first shows, if you will, wouldn't happen in September and October. It would be some time before we'd really need, need that space uh, to be uh, formally completed. The bigger priority was on the cafeteria and the kitchen and making sure that, that that which they had to turn around over the summer got turned around and completed in its renovation before school started and we had kids in the building. so. Uh, we're working on punch list right now. The project team continues to work well together, and we certainly imagine that uh, that all of the details will be closed up here before the, uh, bef well, hopefully before the calendar year closes. So. But yeah, please. A, a couple of comments is that you know the, even though we will have completed the project, hopefully paid all of our bills, there's still we always hold money out. You know that until we're satisfied with the with with the end result. Um, but the other thing is, is two-year warranty here, <laughs> so we're not um, we we, which is really great because you know sy these systems are all very much around technology and computer driven, and so you know you need to really be able to balance all of the, especially the mechanical systems in the building. So having that um, two-year warranty on on that building will really be help. They'll be ready to come back down and and give us a hand whenever we need to. So uh, that's been great. A couple of um, uh, in addition to the auditorium. The community room is complete, and I want to be very clear about that. It was really neat last week. 
um, there's a walking club of seniors in town, and they, you know, they, they're always, I always see them around the academy. They walk downtown, they walk over by center, and uh, they did a tour of the building. And the first question was, um, is the community room available? And it absolutely is. I want to be very clear tonight. This is a great opportunity to say it. That room is available. Mr. Lassard and I are working out a schedule so when uh, the, 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 the walking club or any organization uh, has the need to, you know, want to use a facility, that's available. It's about a 12, 1300 square foot room with a bathroom right there and a little sink and kitchen area so that they can, you know, do coffee and, and whatever they have. So uh, we expect that that will be used a lot. We actually had a little uh, gathering with um, Ms. Delaney last week and we used the community room. So I just want to encourage people to use it. Um, the, the room is segregated from the building. In other words, the safety that's in the building doesn't allow when you're in the community room during the school day, you do not have access into the building there's an access only to the outside and that is really around the issues in security which as you know is is the number one priority for us so don't let me I don't want to miss the opportunity then to talk about the bond proceeds because it's good news and it's always good to deliver that kind of news uh, so we 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 financed the Hampton Academy project with a 25-year bond that we went out with the New Hampshire excuse me the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank to secure they had a, a decent return uh, that day in that effort. We uh, completed the bonding at 3.15 percent, uh, which was better than we had projected. All of our numbers had been targeted at roughly three and a half. Uh, obviously, in a project like this, you didn't, you don't need all of the 25.95 million day one, and so you stick it in the bank, and then you have to do something with it. We considered uh, the New Hampshire Public Depository Investors Pool. We considered uh, the Citizens Bank, who we'd done our banking with most recently, and we looked at uh, TD, and we ended up with TD Bank to do some laddered CDs with some staggered maturities and invest that. Uh, if you think back to those years, and I, some of you do a lot more of this than we get to do in the normal course of our business. Uh, not the not the best interest rate market. It's certainly not like when when I when I was in Exeter and we built Exeter High School and the bond the the interest rate markets were crazy by comparison. We were in the we were in the teens. You know, we were at double digits in terms of the interest rates that we were able uh, to return. And we had to think hard about arbitrage that we not make more money with the money than we were spending to to borrow it. So, in this case. Uh, we have, we still have one CD outstanding. We continue to roll. The 30-day money is better. The interest rates are better on the short than they are anything longer, even 60, 90 days. So, I've just been renewing that um, month at a time with whatever dollars we can continue to kick off. Uh, but in the fund balance that is declared for this June 30th, that will benefit this tax rate setting uh, this month or next. We released $217,841.50, which was the audited amount of proceeds from the bond as of June 30th of 18, so at the end of last year. Today, we have at least another uh, 195000 to 198000 that has been generated, and we expect that as you go to set tax rates in the fall of 20, there will be another 202 or more that will be added to the fund balance then to offset taxes. Total, uh, in total, we, we anticipate that we will have generated a little over $420,000 to help offset taxes, just proceeds on those bond dollars that sat waiting for the project to consume them. So, uh, I, <clears throat> I always try at this moment to remind you about where we are. So we've launched into 1920. Your operating budget was at $23.7 million. You approved that long-term maintenance article again as you have in the past. And uh, child benefit services to benefit Sacred Heart was a little lower this year as their enrollment uh, has fluctuated. So total appropriations of just over $24 million. Sir. Is it okay to ask questions as we go? Yeah, I, I, uh, go ahead. Now, I, I would normally like to wait to the end, but go ahead, Steve. I just want to point out, see, Mike, just to remind the voters at home and everybody at home, the school's budget was approved back in March, unlike the town. School's budget was approved completely. Okay, just wanted to point that out so that so that people know that you're not working on a default budget. Right, and we run on. A, I also remind you and folks at home, we run on. A, we run on a July to June fiscal year, um, and so as we prepare now, um, we're we're preparing for we're preparing for the budget year that starts July one of twenty next year. Right. Um, so. 
financials. You want to talk a little bit about the opening and the goals? Where? Well, we we had a, our enrollment is kind, really kind of steady. Uh, we haven't really uh, dropped off. Um, we we will be over 1,100 once this uh, the fall we enter the fall season. You know, there's a there's a little uptick uh, come right after the Columbus Day weekend. We see an uptick, so we anticipate 1,100. It's been around that you know uh, that number. We had one really low class in kindergarten, but it w w I think you remember it was like 85, which really surprised us, but it sprung back up to 110. So we're back up where we think we should be. So um, we, we opened, a, uh, the, again, you know, you, you can't, you have to be there to appreciate these kids and the parents and the families all at school. And um, the uh, school has really um, an important part of this community and all, and it, 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 it weaves the, the, the community together. It is the fabric of the community. And um, you can see that in all the faces of, of the youngsters and, and uh, the parents are pretty pleased to be bringing them to school and dropping them off. This year, we um, we did reduce our buses by one. We looked at the enrollment. We um, we looked at the ridership. We always take numbers on our buses so we know how many kids are riding. Uh, we see, you know, the numbers are low. We, we did this year. We, we reduced it by one bus. I mean, those are ways that we can be efficient in terms of the operating budget and, and help um, uh, keep costs in check. <coughs> we did have... We did do that. We uh, welcomed 10 new teachers. A uh, number of them were, um, we had six or seven retirees this year. Um, and so that's why you see an uptick in the new teacher hires. Uh, and um, and we had some uh, some other positions that um, folks took a different position in a different community. So um, we saw ten new teachers. We always do an orientation. We always take them on the trolley. There's a picture in your in your packet because we take all of our new staff on a trolley ride all through town, down uh, down into the beach. We show them all that area because you know a lot of our kids live down there. Uh, we go right over across the bridge into the little um, section that Hampton has on the other side of the bridge. Um, and the, but we also go across the other side of Route One and uh, go over into Timber Swamp and uh, all in that area, uh, so that they can see the more rural nature, if you will, of of, of Hampton. Obviously, they see the schools, Winnicott and High School. That's all part of our community. So it's a great. That's probably one of the things they love about orientation the most. And by the way, our administrators always go, and they tell me that's their favorite time. So um, it's it's a great trip, and we do that every year. Um, I think uh, we we had a great start, and I, I reiterate that our schools are um, productive. We've received our test scores this year. Again, our kids did very well, um, significantly above state average, and I mean significantly by 20, 25 points. So I'm pleased with the performance of our youngsters. You know, we have to use those measures. Those are important. They're not the only thing, and testing isn't the only thing we have for kids, but it helps us as teachers know what we have to do with the kids. So uh, we saw uh, we saw that uh, the test scores came in pretty well this year from the state assessment. Um, I, you want to talk about health insurance? Because that's oh, always a good I, you one. You know, I, I, I threw that in the slide. Yeah. I wanted you folks to know it's just one piece of our, of our uh, financial picture, but... But our rates went up this year by just one tenth of a percent. It's it feels almost unheard of on a on a run that's now from 2010. The rates that have been set when we arrived straight through to these rates, we've got a run that is just over 12 percent total. So over these years, it's an average of 1.3. And three of the last six years, we've actually had decreases. Um, nice. I, I, we should all knock on yes. wood. I don't want to. Absolutely. <laughs> I've always said, please don't ever ask Mr. Lani to prove on, on camera how the data can show that our wellness activities have made a difference because it's really, it's really hard to connect the dots on those. But the reality is we've had a really strong wellness initiative that has been targeted at staff. You can see it in our attendance. Uh, and uh, it's, it has to have had some impact because yeah. around the state, Others in the pool aren't seeing the same kind of performance. I'm the same provider for the entire time. Uh, yes, 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 we have been with Health Trust yeah. Anthem yeah, the whole time. 
Again, I have to congratulate the, the teaching and the staff, administrators, and the support staff who have on, taken on this initiative of wellness and reminded people how to take care of themselves. And there's all kinds of little incentives, and we do fun things with them, but we also um, give them uh, suggestions about ways that they can ch- keep their costs in check. And uh, as a result of that, we've seen significant uh, steady as you go, so to speak, um, around health insurance premiums so I, I just want to I just want to tell you that uh, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate the kind words that were said initially uh, at the outset of the meeting I it has been a pleasure to work here uh, it, I, I did not manage to find myself living here in the years that I've worked here but I have genuinely appreciated essentially living here day by day because <laughs> it's where I spend the majority of my time uh, it's, uh, I have to continue to remind myself and others the grass is not greener, it's just different grass. Uh, but having worked for a, almost a decade in the multi-district SAU 16 in Exeter, with that size, and for me at a very high level with a fair amount of staff and somewhat removed, I spoke to the staff here uh, on the, uh, one of the opening days and had the opportunity to tell them how much I've appreciated what for us has been very entrepreneurial, for me, I keep calling it granular because between Mariah and I, we are the business office and, right. and the difference for me that was biggest is that I know every one of 119 teachers on the payroll and every one of the paras and custodians, I can tell you what building they're in, what function they serve. I could probably tell you details like salary and elections for health and you know, I know all of that and I know them all by sight and with 1200 plus employees in Exeter, I, I just didn't know that. It's been really nice to work that closely with all of the people that serve our community and work with your children. And, uh, and for me, it's also been nice to, 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 to know more about them, their families, and the community in general, yourselves included. So <clears throat> now I go from a big district to a little district to a city, which is, I'm sure, a completely different creature. Um, and, uh, and it'll be my pleasure to come back on occasion and tell you just what kind of craziness I got myself into. <laughs> But I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate the opportunity to observe. Thank you. <coughs> so just in, in, in closing, I just wanted to um, just quickly review the goals that we have established the board adopted for the for this coming year. And they're very they're focused on our strategic plan um, and all the and the focus groups and the input that we got from all kinds of folks across the community. First one will be around communication. We're always working to improve our communication making sure that um, our, all of our stakeholders um, g- get the messages and understand what we're doing and why we're doing it and to continue to promote community involvement. The second was um, to create and maintain a healthy and physically and emotionally safe environment. You know, so much of our work is around safety. Uh, we're training our staff around ALICE training, working very closely with the um, Hampton PD. Those They've been great. Our three SROs in the building have been superb. They've all been trained. Our administrators have been trained, and now we're moving on to our teachers. So um, security is, uh, safety and security is a number one um, uh, priority for our, for our district. Uh, the third is to continue our professional practice. Obviously, we're, we're a learning, you know, we're a learning environment. Teaching and learning, critical to our, the work we do every day, and we will continue to work on curriculum and, um, and trying to close the gap. And what we mean by that is when we look at some of our information, we know that some young are not doing as well as we would like to see them do. Those are youngsters with in special education. Those are youngsters that um, are in poverty where they're not as achieving as, as high as we think they should. So we call that the gap, and we're trying to reduce that gap. And, and so there'll, there'll be a lot of work on that. The last one is around equity and diversity. You know, our population's changing. We have well over, I think we're up to 45 youngsters in our English language learning program. Uh, we're, we, we have two teachers uh, working with those youngsters who are learning uh, English uh, here in Hampton and uh, it's awesome to have just the variety of youngsters from all over the world if I, I've, sh- I've showed you the map before I think I do it in the budget right I'll, I'll bring it back because it's amazing kids from all over the world that are attending school here so we want to focus on making sure that 
um, kids all get a fair shake, and that we respect and work around the diversity that we need to address, and it's happening everywhere. So those are our goals for next year, and uh, uh, I think you'll see some of the budget that we'll present in the f in, in uh, December whenever you invite us date, back. Which will be run by Mrs. That, Brown Russell tonight. Okay, great. Um, uh, we will, you'll see that our budget will reflect some of these goals. Thank you. Any questions for Superintendent Murphy? Uh, Mr. LeBranch. I noticed that the address is still Scott Road. Are you <laughs> planning to move the, back to the market? Uh, we are. Um, we um, we were we weren't ready to move uh, when all the facility work was done. For instance, Hampton Academy was finally settled. Marston, remember now we we upset that apple cart too because we used they were using our building. So and now we're in budget season and we've had a major change in our office. Um, so we uh, and we needed to get a lease that. Um, we couldn't get a part time, uh, half a year lease, so we're there till June. But we are going back to Marston in June. Yeah. I just want to mention one other thing. Um, you mentioned arriving in, in Hampton <coughs> back in 2010. And the thing is that both of you arrived. You didn't arrive to a job that had already existed, you started from zero because you started SNU 90. And that was something that the voters had voted in. Mm. And at the time, it was, you know, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? And there was all this controversy. And it turned out to be the best thing in the world. But you arrived, and you created from zip. And put it all together, you know, made it work. And so that's, that's your legacy for both of you, because it's, it's an amazing thing that you've done for this it's, you know, very valuable, very valuable, so. Thank, thank you. you, but you know, I mean, I will always say that it's a team it's effort, a team. you know, and we're so lucky to be surrounded by very talented people. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Ladd? For you, Superintendent, what's the capacity of the academy? I know you say you're running around 1,100. What would be the maximum the number? Well, we have 1,100 in the district. Um, right now, we're running around 400 students. We um, have the capacity to go as high as 500. Okay, so there's a lot of capacity reserve built into the Right. Project. I mean, you just don't know, um, especially when you think about some of the development that is going on across uh, Route 1, um, probably not so much in the, in the downtown area, obviously in the beach area. But um, we are seeing some, um, um, some development. Uh, and it's in preparation. You know, that building is solid as a rock. It, this was not a building built, built with uh, toothpicks. This is a solid building that will, we will be with you for many, many years, and uh, as long as your existing building. So we, the, the committee really felt, the building committee felt that we, and the board, felt that we didn't want to turn around in five years and say, oh, my goodness, we don't have space. We, it would be very foolish. And my other comment would be you built in the capacity to be an emergency shelter for the community should that arise? That's correct. We have all of the components with except the generator. So from the site where the generator will be placed, um, and that will be a decision that the board will make, very similar to what we did at Marston. Um, Hampton Academy will be an emergency shelter should anything happen. And, and as you know, uh, not last year, we didn't have that kind of weather. The year before, there were two occasions when I received calls from the chief, and um, uh, Chief Sawyer was looking to open up Marston because he was concerned about flooding at, in the beach. And so we're ready. We have uh, Mr. Lassard, uh, Mrs. Borg, um, staff, uh, we were here in town, so we were able to accommodate anything that would happen at the beach, and I think that's really important. Okay. My only final comment is having a grandchild who goes to your system, she's very impressed, and if she's impressed, it impresses me. Great. Mr. Henderson? Hey, just another, like I said earlier, tremendous job. You know, your reports are always right there, done on time, you know. Uh, didn't need much explanation. They were clear. They were concise. It helped us out. Helps the taxpayers out. Great job. We'll miss you daily and uh, enjoy your new job. Ms. Cabertis, any final? No comment. Thank you. Mrs. Brado-Russell. 
Thank you very much. And we'll be seeing you on October 5th, if not sooner, and yep. then, of course, uh, in December. For yeah, so you'll, you'll do the dates with Ginny. So We're going to we go over there tonight. I have a tentative. And I'll, Ginny will send an email to you. We've got a couple things we've got to run by you on. Okay. Locations. We yeah. and I talked about that. Yeah, right. we can we can do some right. accommodations for you. Um, I just want to make a final comment. You know, Mariah uh, is uh, now the facility uh, facilities. I want to say that finance director for the district. So um, she will be taking over some of the roles that Nathan had in the district. And as you know, Mariah worked with us. Mariah Cordes Blaine worked for us in um, in the office doing all accounts payable, receivable, payroll. So she's very uh, skilled at it. So she will be joining me when we meet with you in, in the fall or in the early winter. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Wait till they get finished up a little bit. So our next item under old business, <clears throat> the first item I had, and, and believe it or not, even though we haven't met in three months, it's been a busy summer, so I, you've seen uh, a lot of the information requests that I have sent on to you. Uh, I'm going to ask my vice chairman, who is the alternate to the selectman's rep for the budget committee? Do we know? I thought it was Mary Louise. Well, I thought so too because I'm concerned that, um, that that's a critical position and I I, I'm going to call Mrs. Woolsey tomorrow to see if she was notified because there's important stuff that I needed to ask Mr. Bridal tonight. Um, one of which is, um, so that the viewers at home know, we asked for, and, and I want to thank Mrs. Bridal Russell for always coming through and asking information. Mm -hmm. We asked for a lot of information, a lot. Um, unfortunately, this chairman has not received any information from the town in a timely manner. I keep having to ask for it, to ask for it, to ask for it. That is going to stop. I had a meeting with Mr. Welch on Friday. He assured me that he was going to inform the department heads, and I was going to ask Mr. Bridal that tonight, um, to get the information. And Mrs. Bridal Russell can tell you, and Mr. Branch, having been former chairman, we need that information as we deliberate. Eight days ago, we had an excellent public works report given at the selectman meeting. And I do have something I'm going to be handing out to you folks as a, an addendum to what uh, Public Works Director Chris Jacobs talked about. But it is very difficult for us to continue to deliberate. And I thought we were getting beyond this. Um, and I'm going to have to um, uh, get in touch with Mr. Bridal. But and for tomorrow, I'll, I'll touch base with the alternate because we need these reports. And we, we just can't, as we get into in a few minutes of the upcoming meetings and the, the winter time frame, uh, and there's a reason for Tuesdays and Thursdays, because sometimes we need a date in between to get information. We're going to need it. Email, uh, this town emails thousands of emails a day, and there's no reason why we can't get it. So I was hoping to get, uh, I forwarded you all the quarterly report from the fire department, which was excellent. I forwarded you uh, Chief Sawyer's report. I think that was sometime in July or June. And I was hoping to get Public Works. We have not received recreation, which I asked for. So I can guarantee you that that's going to change really quick. Um, the other things that I sent off to you was there were some questions, I think, Ms. Capertis asked and others regarding legal department um, information. Uh, the enormous cost, and if those of you who have looked at the financials for every month, we are really looking at high legal costs, both outside counsel and what we spend in that office. And I hope you all had a chance to digest that because we are way um, over budget in that area. I mean, extremely over. And it's going to be interesting to see when they come in to deliberate on that. Um, I'm going to ask the manager and the budget and the selectman's rep hopefully tomorrow, to invite Christy Pullum in for our October 15th meeting, kind of give us, as Mr. Ladd pointed to, rightfully so, last May and June, that it would be nice to have a nine-month window. So in October, we will have September numbers. 
and we can look at it and see how we're looking for the last three months of the year and it doesn't have to be a long presentation we're not going to take a lot of Christie's time half hour at most and she'll be I'm sure she'll be glad to come in I saw her on Friday but I wanted to follow protocol as we established but um, I'm, I'm going to figure out if Mrs. Woolsey was asked tonight. Anybody have anything else on their old business? Uh, uh, Mr. LeBranch? No. Mr. Ladd? No. Mr. Pluff? No. Mr. Henderson? No. Mrs. Capertis? No. Mrs. Bridal Russell? No. Selectman's report. The only thing I can add, and I'm not the Selectman's rep, but I hope you've all been watching the meetings. I don't miss any of them. There's a lot going on, ladies and gentlemen. We're in for a very busy and a lot of stuff. Um, I understand through listening to the meetings that as of last Friday, we already had 32 Warren articles. 32. Mm -hmm. And we're not even in. Now, they haven't been deliberated by the selectmen, and, and Mrs. Brown Russell knows those could be cut out or whatever. Many of them aren't money. I have not seen them. But that gives you an indication on September 17th, we're talking about 32 Warren articles, and we haven't even, that's not counting the firefighters' contracts, which is the only town contracts up this year. We do have the teachers' contracts that uh, our great superintendent, Mrs. Murphy, alluded to earlier, and they're in negotiations that will be starting. So think about both those between the school and the town, and uh, we'll be uh, looking at that. I'm sure we're going to be looking at a lot of road improvements and all kinds of stuff, but uh, keep in mind on that. I did want to also alert you all to the discussion that took place. It was really good feedback by the fire department and public works and, and kind of frightening away when Ms. Mrs. Murphy was talking about enrollment. How about the west side of town? That's Ooh. coming, ladies and gentlemen. And, and you, if, you, if you saw the reports about a possible sub fire substation, a po adding sewer on the west side, a quarry and putting water in there, Development is not stopping, and these are huge issues. And I know Mr. LeBranch has brought up in even the committees he's on. I may ask Stephen on the, uh, the uh, Village District report after Mr. Ladd to give us a kind of an update on what he's uh, going into. But so, you know, keep your hat on here. There's a lot going on. There's going to a lot to continue going on. Uh, Mrs. Brada Russell, school board report. I think um, Superintendent Murphy and uh, financial director, former financial director Nate Lonnie gave gr excellent report. Yes. I would like to thank the uh, budget committee tonight for giving such positive comments to the superintendent and finance officer. We don't always hear positives. People are willing to share the negatives when they're not happy, but not a lot of people share when they are happy. So it's very nice to hear positive, uplifting comments, and thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bry Russell, and I'm going to turn the tables uh, as compliment yourself because I have been very impressed uh, with what has been going on and how you've handled, as you always have. And uh, I, it's not an easy time now, and I'll leave it at that. But you're doing a great job too, Jenny, and, I, and uh, we're very glad to have all the great work you do. Hampton Village District Report. This year started off poorly with a simple explanation: Mother Nature defines our success. June was a poor weather month for the district. July, August, and the first half of September have been exceptionally good. We began the year with the traditional sandcastle event, which is always a significant way to begin. And this year, we ended with the fire show, which we've now done for three years in a row. And what's probably most interesting to me about that event is there was a deluge of unanticipated rain at about 7 p.m. <laughs> the right. show was scheduled for 8. <laughs> Around 8 o'clock, nobody knew whether it would go on or not. One of the comments that struck me from one of the presenters was, make friends with someone with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> and, but they did communicate beautifully with the crowd and at 8.30, we were able to put the show on. What was most impressive about that was the number of people that stayed through these unfavorable weather conditions. We had at least 1,000 people actually watch the show, and we anticipate we would have had three or 4,000 had the weather broke differently. Which brings me back to our second most recent major addition was the circus. We did that Saturday night of Labor Day weekend, and what I've heard is it's the largest single crowd for any event we've ever held. It was estimated somewhere around 5,000 people. Mm. I mean, 
And what was beautiful to see was the fact that uh, the demographic was a young to middle-aged crowd with younger children. And to see those kids sit mesmerized watching that show, I don't even, I'm not even sure if they were breathing. They weren't <laughs> moving at all. And to anecdotally hear afterwards, there were no available rooms at the beach for Labor Day weekend. We don't take credit for that, but we feel we were part of that. And vendors were saying they actually ran out of stock, which is not something that's ever happened to my knowledge before. So we're very pleased with those performances, and we're comfortable that we've been able to rebrand the district after the hit a year before with Legionnaires' disease, and we thank God that the water bin didn't play into that weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole separate issue, perhaps not for this committee, right. but it's right. got to be uh, somehow addressed. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Lett. I thought at this time, Mr. LeBranch, you want to give any update on the committee you're on and the... Yeah, I, I want to mention that the chat committee, we've been meeting all summer long. Yes, yep. And um, we've met today, as a matter of fact, from 3 to 5 o'clock. Um, Bob's on that committee with me. And we have, we're still, uh, it, it's, it's a process. And we're working with Jen from the, Jen Hale with the DPW. Right. It's a process. People think that it's just, go down there and do something. But it isn't. It doesn't work that way. You have to establish all the facts first. Then you have to come up with a plan, and then you have to come up with the money as well. Okay. But it is a process. We've been working diligently all summer. We didn't miss any meetings. Our we have a uh, presenter that follows an agenda that we stick to, and um, and we are making progress. So I just want you to know that eventually. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna say okay this is what you can do but we're almost at that point now and uh, today we talked about uh, impl um, implementing on the you know different levels but uh, perhaps putting together some instructions and guidance so if an individual wants to lift the house um, where do they start you know what are the what 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 permits do they need from the state, from the conservation committee, from the uh, building uh, permits, and et cetera? Give an example, perhaps, and at our next meeting, uh, Rayanne's going to bring some examples of buildings that have already been done. There was one done on, lifted on 55 Highland Ave this past spring that's yep. finished now, and that's, that's like the poster child for lifting a building. It was done. Um, lifted, it's completely finished, it looks beautiful, and Rayanne told us this afternoon that there were no uh, cracks in ceilings or cracks in the walls when they, you know, when they lift a house and then they set it back down on a new, uh, new, found new piling, yeah, yeah, foundation, piling. there were no, no, no damage at Good. all to the house, which is incredible. So, Good. But, but that's the type of thing that we're moving closer to, we're getting there. And uh, I I talked to Barbara just before the meeting started because, of course, she's on the Rockingham um, Planning Commission. And there is actually a person that we're going to be contacting. Um, there's, there's some federal grant money um, from FEMA to help people Good. to do some of these projects. So it is something we're addressing. There certainly is a big interest uh, to this town, to our to the tax sure. base of this town, so, um, and I enjoy it very much because it's always very informative. We have a very lively uh, group. So. Well, Stephen, you've had a great record of attendance yeah. through the years, and I'm going to actually add that onto the agenda as much as we can get updates from you. I think it's important. The only other thing on the role business before I go around, if anybody else has any, uh, you mentioned Mrs. Kravitz. <laughs> she and I are colleagues together on the master plan committee. I think many of you remember last year, the Warren article for the master plan did not pass. Uh, this year. Uh, um, I was asked to be on the committee, and I, I have to have thoroughly enjoyed it. We're in having our fourth meeting uh, this Wednesday, uh, tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow night, we've had uh, Barbara's great expertise being the chair of the Rockland Planning Commission. We've also had DES in. Uh, we've, we're going to have uh, coastal f uh, DES folks in, I believe, tomorrow night. We are really looking at master plans in other communities, mostly local, 
you know, Exeter, Hampton Falls. We have looked at London dairies and a few others, but some really neat information. And we're, we're going to be getting close to hopefully starting tomorrow with putting out surveys to the, to the residents on you know, what, what do they feel about master plan? I mentioned West Side development. That's a huge issue for a lot of people. What's going to happen to this town in 15, 20 years? So that's going to happen, and it's all good stuff. And then we're going to get, hopefully by October, definitely November, but a Warren article in place. And that's what the goal is, right, to put a Warren article. So uh, we have some great members of the, uh, the committee, and I urge you to watch. And it's on the night of the planning board meeting, so it's always in the beginning. I think we're actually under two use changes tomorrow night. We're second, at the second planning board meeting every month. Yeah, but I mean, tomorrow night's agenda. We have been the first on the agenda, but I think tomorrow night we're, but it's it's really, really good stuff, and I'll, I'll have some more updates for you. I'm going to pass these around. This this is an excellent report that we did get uh, from uh, Mr. Welch and our town manager, and Christy Pullum uh, did get these to me Friday. I was in the town office, and I had a, a great meeting, which will lead me to the next subject coming up about uh, the dates that we're you all kind of looking forward to. But if you look at uh, the estimate, and, and, and by the way, we're not going to go through all this tonight because it's handed to you, but just to right. give you an idea, the estimated replacement cost worksheet, so the total length of road in miles, this is done by uh, public direct, uh, Director of Public Works Chris Jacobs along with our Deputy Jen Hale, 76.4 miles. Total road replacement value, 22,191,252.36. The, the average annual length of planned road replacement in miles, 2.5. Average annual cost for planned road replacement, $726,507.04. Unit replacement cost, $55. I mean, you know, Mike, uh, Mr. Pluff, I know, could, could uh, uh, Mr. Pluff would definitely want to comment on either now or next meeting. But I think the key thing here is the discussion we had probably 20 years ago when Mr. Hangen was here and about the need for going to have to replace a lot of our roads, and many of our roads are going to need sewer replacement with them. Mike, did I have the right units of replacement cost? Was it? Yeah, $55, $55 per, per linear foot. Per linear foot. So, and I think Mr. Pluff, for those who have known him for all these years and been probably one of the longest budget committee members, I mean, he's talked about these things. And as you go through this, there's sidewalks in here, estimated, and, and it goes back to uh, the types of things we're going to have to really look at, drainage, and, and, and why it's important to us, of course, it's a budget, right? So it's going to be things. I can anticipate for this coming budget season that we will have some Warren articles dealing with road improvements, which I think is great. And we gotta, we got to kind of do a little each year, but this is an excellent report, and I just literally got this uh, Friday, and, and Christy, uh, printed some copies of it. So I'd ask you to look at that and come back with any questions uh, under information request, uh, certainly for October 15th. Our next meeting is October 15th, and the only thing we tentatively have is Christy Pullum on the agenda, and then we get into the fun stuff. So I'm going to pass around a little calendar I did, and I'm going to, and, and I'm going to um, go over it, and I'm going to pass these in, six, in month that will be the first, so there's October. And then Barbara, I've got one for you too. You can pass that down. Um, and so, did Ginny get one too? I, she will. Oh. Or are we gonna go over each month? I'm gonna go over each month, I don't wanna, yes. I'd rather do it that way, because <laughs> you're gonna get all months, but I wanna be, so the first one is pretty easy. So we have a BudCom, and I put this together on my little computer today, so BudCom meeting, the regular scheduled meeting is the 15th. The BUDCOM workshops are tentatively scheduled to start October 29th, which is a, 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 the night that we have you know, a free room, and October 31st. When I say tentative, and I know Mr. LeBranch and Mr. Pluff and Mrs. Brado Russell especially can appreciate, that's tentative because if the selectmen aren't ready to get to that night, we may not start to the following week, but we've still got to plug them in. So that's October, and so that's that stance. Now, let's go to November when it gets a little tricky. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask, oh, as, go ahead. as a new member. Yes, I'm sorry. So if the selectmen are not ready for us and we plug this in for, a th let's say, Thursday, when will we be notified when our next meeting will be? It may be the night before. So yeah. so you might notify me on Thursday the 31st that I need to be available on Friday the 1st? No. No. 
No, what I'm saying is these these schedules, you should put these dates in the uh, in your calendar. Okay. If the selectmen don't finish their review be prior to those dates, we won't meet that week. Okay. That's and, okay. and, and what I'd ask, especially those who have been here and are being involved, know that it, you got to be flexible. Remember, our busy time is November, December, January, and, and it's just did I hand out November, Jen? You did. Oh. Oh. Well, the, on our side, you did. I take care of this side. <laughs> okay, I got November. Yeah, I mean, so. You don't have to come. <laughs> so, uh, right, uh, <laughs> you don't have to come in November. <laughs> here's where it gets tricky, and this is where Mrs. Bridal, and I'll, be, I'll send you an email on this too, Jenny. Yep. Um, starting in November, we have uh, our a BudCom workshop on Tuesday, November 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, we then uh, have a BudCom BudCom workshop scheduled for November 12th. Now, that's also the night, Jenny, that normally the school board meets in here. That's one of three nights that I'm going to ask you to have your meetings, and Kathleen seemed to think that wouldn't be a problem, your new facility in the academy. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to change anything yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that will be okay. And then we have one scheduled for the 14th, and then the budget workshop on the 19th. Any questions on those? All at 7 a.m., uh, 7 p.m.? All at 7 p.m., yep. Then we go into December, and the, by the way, this this will probably change a little bit, you know. Right. Um, Man, you, all, you printed all these uh, color and everything. Wow. But Aren't you impressed, Stephen? <laughs> so, um, Jenny, I would like to. Um, I would like to ask you to ask, uh, and, and, and this is Bridal's always had this date in mind, I'm sure, but we always have the first Tuesday of December for the school to come in. The present. Now, I know even that following week you have your regularly month meeting, and that's going to be another night, Jenny, on the 10th, and I'll send you all this in email, okay. that I'm going to ask the school board to meet at the academy, and then we'll have our BudCom workshop, and then a budget workshop uh, December 12th, and then a budget workshop December 17th. Now, remember the thing about December. We may do very well, and by that I mean these, there's a lot of nights in here. Yeah. And we may get to the point where we may only need one night in December or possibly two, but we have to at least plug them in because of the nature of um, you know, what it is we're doing. Now, the real other important stuff is January. This is where we get into some, you know, it gets really crazy. Um, and like I said, this will change uh, a little bit. But uh, January 14th is, is going to be our discussion Tuesday, January 14th, is going to be a discussion of both uh, school and town warrant articles. <coughs> now, I put here at the school board because, Jenny, that's also the third installment of that's your monthly meeting. So there will be the November, December, January, which I'll email you, and if you could check with Superintendent Murphy that we could have those three meetings of the school board at your um, at your facility uh, instead of at town hall. Okay. Public are you discussing school warrant articles on the 14th too? That is the plan at this point, but we will be have so we and, and we may have to change a little bit of that, but we're plugging it was just for purposes of plugging it in. Um, we may actually, you know what, Jenny, we'll probably just do town warrant articles on the 14th. You know what, Brian, usually we do it when we do on the our December budget. 3rd. Yes. Yeah. Good. You're right. We'll do the town warrant articles on the 14th. Okay. The public hearing, Mr. Welch absolutely said we should we should have the drop dead date of January 16th because we do have our regular budget meeting the 21st, which still is going to happen. But if we made the public hearing any later than that, they need to have everything done and in place by the deliberative session, which is Saturday, February 1st. And oh, so yeah. he said the public hearing would absolutely absolutely has to be that Thursday. Yeah. More good news, thank to Mrs. Bridal Russell. Um, and, Ms. and Superintendent Murphy, um, they have gotten an official request from Mr. Welch, but I don't think it's going to be an issue, that both public hearings on the school and town, as well as the deliberative session, will be held at Hampton Academy Good. for the first time. Now, all the workshops will be here, but yeah, the okay. public hearings and the deliberative session will be, and we're waiting to get final confirmation from Superintendent Murphy, and I know she's been really busy and everything, so I'm sure she'll get to that. Ms. Capertis. Uh, the public hearings also begin at 7 p.m.? Everything is 7 p.m. Okay. Yeah, our meetings are always at 7, so the public hearing and the deliberative sessions will be at, tentatively, although it's pretty secure, at the Hampton Academy, and I believe, uh, Jenny, is it going to be in the auditorium or the studio, one of the two? Probably be in the auditorium. auditorium, I would think. I would think. It's going to be nice to, to, to see that. 
But I, as I just want to caution all of you, you know, some of these dates, I think the beginning dates, we plug those in there. I know it's usually November yeah, we start. Right. So, like I said, um, in answer to Ms. Caperta's question, if you f we'll be following the selectmen's meetings. They meet every other week. So they're meeting next Monday night. And I don't think they meet again to the 7th and then the 21st. So we're going to have to watch to see how much, from what I understand, they're close to getting the budget information together for the selectmen, which means they could roll through this and then we could be on time. But it definitely won't be before the 29th. Okay. Um, so, and the only thing I ask, and I want to thank Mr. Mara. <coughs> Mr. Morris sent me an email. If you're going to be absent, please email. I know Mr. Lab was great at doing that last year. You know, it, it just appreciates because then we know what we're looking at as far as um, things going on. The um, hold on one second. I had one more thing here. Okay. Um, did anybody else have any questions on the schedule, Mr. Branch? How does that look, uh, Mr. Pluff, uh, tentatively? It looks very good, and I'm looking forward to having the public hearing at the uh, auditorium. At yes. The I think that's going to be right. great. You know? Yeah. And I think, you know, as, as we said earlier, it's difficult, right, because we need information, and it's just going to be so critical that we get things, because what we want to do is be able to say to the voters, we have the information. Oh, yeah. And we have right. all the information. I hope it, it I mean, we, we waited a little bit, if you remember last year. It was glad We got it the night of some of the meetings. Right. That's going to be an issue that was got to be addressed, because we cannot be handed information the night of meetings. It's not fair to you, 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 and, and then we have to wait two nights later, and then we may have other questions. So I'm hoping we get the message out that we need, because I know you guys get the information great, and the school board always gives us reports. So. Yeah. And the thing that you have to remember is that yeah. uh, you've got to reserve this room. Yes. Okay, so we may not use all these nights. Right. And the other thing is you've got to remember that it's winter by then. You right. may have snow. Well, that's it. <laughs> and, you never know. And speaking of that, thank you. And those dates that I put on, they are for us. So we have, uh, Christina had done a great job already. I got there Friday and she had almost half of it done. And she yeah. said, She's what do you think of this? What do you think of that? But as Mr. LeBranch has said, if we have any sort of uh, weather, weather, and uh, the, the only other thing, that, speaking of that, are we going to use the same philosophy we had last year with weather uh, that Mr. Jones, Chairman Jones had said about calling a meeting and then you picking up five people and then we go home and cancel the meeting or how's that work? I don't we don't think so. Okay, so, we're not. But in terms of weather, if yes. the, for whatever reason, nice if the rain. town, right, if the it? town is closed, oh, I mean, is that the rule? Oh, I would notify you right yeah. now. Oh, you would. So oh, we'll but. just be on emails and yeah. you let us know because we all live in New England and. Well, I can tell you, here, uh, <laughs> I, I work around the clock, so you may get an email from me at midnight. I mean, you. The, the point is, you will hear from me is after or before. Most right, but I guess back. what I'm asking is that if the town offices are closed, yeah. we still might meet because we can all get here. Is that what I'm hearing? The town offices have been closed sometimes during the day, and then it stops snowing. Okay. And I, I think it's all going to depend on. It, all right. It, it does. Have to wait. Yeah. I'll walk. Have to wait. I mean, I'll walk. I'm close enough. It's a very, <laughs> it's a rarity that. Well, these meetings ever get canceled. We have a list too many, but it, no. how it's much lead time will we get about the agenda prior to the meeting? Do you the think? agenda for any one of the meetings. Each meeting. Uh, the upcoming meetings? Yeah. Um, the, the town will give us, as you have been accustomed to, the town will give us a tentative schedule yeah. for which department heads are coming yeah. in, and you'll get that. Um, I had two members in this budget committee already said to me, they've got the agendas the earliest they've ever gotten them. So you'll get them from me as soon as you get them, as soon as I hear from them, because we can only go by, but it could change. So right, we right. could have public works one night, then all of a sudden, right, Jenny, it changes. Right. And But I'll tell you, as soon as I get the information, the email goes out, and uh, you'll, you'll definitely hear, because uh, it'll be good. And th speaking of that, um, the budget books, Yes, that's going to be another yeah. thing. So let's say our first meeting is the 29th. I hope we get the budget books a week before. Right. Well, because that could change. That'd be good. Right. Well, but, yeah. but that could change us and we would start November 5th. Because in right. fairness to you guys, I'm not going to get the budgets three or four days before and start the meetings. I don't think Ooh. it gives us enough time to. I think I know having been at both ends that you've got to give people time to digest them. So 
they're already aware of that. I think there'll be understanding of that. I, I'm still thinking it's going to be November 5th. That's my guess. But if it is earlier, if we get the budget books like October 20th, we're in good, we're, we're ready to go. And then we'll be the schedule. And then I'll be sending you emails. Uh, and come prepare any questions if you have <coughs> for the next meeting, like I said, October 15th. And then after that, these series of meetings. But the public hearing, of course, that's an important date. Deliver of session. Uh, we would like to see everybody there, and yeah. that's the first date of deliver session under SB2 March town meetings. If that gets called off, if there's, and the moderator does that, by the way, if that's called off because of a snowstorm, it will be the following Saturday. Correct. It has to be the, yeah. the second Saturday, uh, and by law, we have to do that. So, uh, and also, we need a quorum. Uh, we had one last year, uh, and I think the year before at the budget meetings because if there's any changes that we need to re-vote on, we need at least five people out of the nine. So I hope that won't be an issue and just keep those dates. And you can go on to the NHMA website, a great outline of all the dates for SB2 towns with March elections. Um, just, they it really bring it up in seconds. Um, Mrs. Kravis, do you have anything you want to add? Great minutes, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, just on the master plan? Yes. Ready for good news. Um, the uh, the DE, New Hampshire DES has awarded the town uh, $35,000 for the environmental chapter or section, wow. or whatever it be. And because there's been so much activity, right. they threw another $10,000 nice. in there. So it's a total of $45,000 mm -hmm. out of whatever the total cost ultimately is going Will be. to be. That's great, and we talked about that the last. Uh, and, and I got to tell you, uh, Mrs. Kravitz's expertise uh, is amazing. Uh, in one of the reports we got, she had she must have spent. I mean, you probably didn't see Sunny for five days because I mean she spent a, a lot of time on. It. I'm not kidding; it was excellent. And uh, we got a great. Could I just say that really was? Yeah. Uh, well, Ann Connaby too. Anne yes, yeah. Ann is doing yeah. a great job. She we got a great the, group of people. Where do you see the service? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to tomorrow night. That's the survey we're, we're going to vote on to put out. Oh, yeah. um, um, this meeting is adjourned at 8.14. Nice. Thank you.